All right, everybody, we have reached the weekend of May the 5th, finally, and season 17, we've been able to play four matches so far, and we won all four of them, of course, using Fluanderies. Check the description for the decklist video and the timestamps for when the matches start, but I just want to go over how the progress has been going so far. So, of course, four matches played, four matches won. So far, we played against two tier limits, both of them resigning on turn one once they saw the board that we set up, so thankfully, we went first for those matches. In the matches that actually had a couple of turns, we went second and we were still able to win. This one was a Floodgate Earth deck. Thankfully, uh, if they resolve, there can only be one against us. Um, you know, it's pretty much GG's for me. Uh, but we also went up against a Branded deck. So we're going to take a look at those two matches. I uh, haven't been able to play too much because of work, unfortunately. Uh, but like I said, I you know, with the weekend coming up, I caught up on, on what I needed to. So hopefully we can dive into these matches and make some additional progress through Platinum Ring. So let's go ahead and take a look at these matches. All right, in this matchup, our opening hand looks pretty good. We are going second, but this is like a really good going first hand. But depending on what the opponent is playing, you know, tier and in this case, branded usually don't put up negates. So this hand should be able to resolve. We just have to bother trying to play through potential interruptions like a branded in red into Chimera, a Mirror Jade. The opponent does indeed get their branded fusion off and they've got the Edge Imp discard, which is good. So they're going to have a lot of follow up here. Search Alibur off Tragedy, and then bring out Mirror Jade off of the uh, Lubelion effect, trigger the Edge Imp to get a Fright for a Patchwork. And at this point, they have a Fright for a Poly and a Branded in Red now that they brought from uh, the Jester. So then they have three unknown cards as well. So that's what we're going to have to try to play around. They set two, one of which is likely the Branded in Red. So we know two cards in hand and two mystery cards. The opponent activates Max C in the draw phase to try to play around tactics or droll or something so that's great for us actually and when we look at our hand here and look at the board it's pretty important to try to evaluate and think how am I going to play through this the only real problem is the branded in red getting into a guardian chimera which will pop map if we put it on field um, playing through the mirror jade because they put it in attack mode isn't actually a huge deal if we activate dimensional fissure it turns off the mirror jade because they can't send for cost to the graveyard because everything is going to get banished all monsters that is so what they will likely do is if i activate this first they'll trigger this effect to send albion if they're smart and banish their own um Alubur here uh, with the albion sent to graveyard before the defigure resolves it'll allow them to have the albion follow up at the end of the turn so what we actually want to do because a lot of people don't know this is go into empin because empin will prevent straight up prevent the activation of the mirror jade so all it takes is for them to let a chain link resolve with us having two birds on field because part of the chain of a bird resolving, let's say like chain link uh, one on, on Eaglin, um, is actually the summon. So as soon as they say, I don't want to banish one of your small birds and you're going to let the chain resolve, I will be able to get the Empen on the field before they can uh, respond and activate an effect and that will shut off the Mirror Jade. So you're going to actually see me go for a play like that, I think, first. Uh, but let's see what I do here. Of course, I'm going to activate Extravagance because you have to in the in the main phase. Um, the opponent's field is lighting up because of the Mirror Jade, but they didn't Ash it. So I'm, I'm putting them on no Ash. Uh, going into straight into battle phase because we did draw into the evenly match, which is really good. And let's see what the opponent opts to keep. So this is really good. They We get we out the Branded in red. That was the main interruption that we worry about because we can play through a Mirror Jade, especially in attack mode. So this is no problem. Again, we know... Um, two of their cards in hand because they revealed one of the unknowns in maxi so we know one is a fright for and one is a poly uh so that's really good what are the odds that the last card is a hand trap that can stop us i would say pretty pretty slim so we go ahead and we activate advent banishing the empin of course grabbing map and we have the strongest starter in the game in map and um eaglin and so going back to my first point why do i activate defigure now well because are they really going to activate Albion or Mirror Jade effect to send Albion before the D Fissure resolves and turns us off just to banish the Mirror Jade? So they'd, they'd banish their own, their only card left, and then they'd have Albion follow up for the end of the turn, which honestly would actually be a proper play um, because I'm going to out this Mirror Jade back to the extra deck. So it's not going to trigger the effect to destroy all cards. So let's see what we do here. So of course, off of map, we're going to banish Robina. And now we're going to have all four birds in rotation. Off of Eaglin, we're actually going to search the Monarch because we have Empin Ban that we can search uh, Toucan off of Robina and then use Toucan to bring back the Empin. 
So that's exactly what we do. This was the point where the opponent could have ashed us and that really would have shut us down. But we would have had extension because again, we know Fright Fur and we know Polly. They draw a card, you know, they Fright Fur for an Edge Imp and a Polly. They have two Polly's Edge Imp and then a mystery card in their hand. If it's not a card that they can Polly off of, they essentially would have no follow up. They do have a tragedy, but we would summon Stree for normal summon for turn banish the branded fusion so that they couldn't banish the tragedy to get the branded fusion back and then continue off street summon bring out uh, ryza spin the mirror jade and the maxi back to the top of deck so even if we were interrupted here we would be able to play through and and limit the opponent's extension plays next turn they would essentially be in top deck mode so this is important to analyze guys because you have to think through what are the all what are the different scenarios if my combos get interrupted because you can't play assuming that I'm going to get my full combo off and it's so OP, you have to anticipate you're going to get interrupted, you're going to get shut down, what are your alternative plays? So me summoning Robina without chain blocking, I was willing to accept that risk, knowing that if I did get ashed or something or, or what, like you can't imperm obviously because there's a card in the field, but if I did get interrupted and this didn't resolve, I would have follow-up play because I still have my normal summon for turn, which I can use Stree because I wouldn't have Tukin in hand if Robina didn't resolve. I can use Stree, shut down their extension play with the banishing the, of the of the branded fusion, and then go into Ryza and still out the Mirror Jade. Okay, so this is important to keep concept of. But because we didn't get interrupted, we are going to absolutely pop off here. So we're going to go into the Tukin, bring back the Empin, and then summon Empin, continuing the extension summons. Of course, search for Trap. Normal summon Stree, banish the branded fusion as planned, then double tribute for the Ryza, and we are going to stack the opponent's deck with the Max C and the Mirror Jade back to the extra deck. So this avoids the Mirror Jade getting triggered to go to the Graveyard or Banish pile and pop all the cards on the field, or all the monsters on our side of the field. So that's great, and we're gonna give them a dead draw in Max C. So they're gonna have Max C, Mystery Card, Fright Fur, Patchwork, and a Poly, right? So we go ahead and we set this card and we pass so the only cards that they could really have in their hand that would make their hand somewhat playable um is like another monster like uh, uh, really it can only be alubar or albaz right and we know that they return one of the albaz to their deck so unless they have another monster in hand that they can use the poly off of when they activate edge um fright fur to search for the edge imp and another poly their hand is completely dead right so they do search edge imp and uh the poly and they do indeed have something to poly off of and sure enough, it they do have, of course, um, the Alabaz, but it, again, it, it's not even gonna matter um, because we have the interruptions on our side of the field anyways. But this is literally the only thing the opponent could really have aside from an Alubur that could have uh, caused them to extend plays because now we know they have Polly and Maxi in hand, right? So two dead cards. So they go into Lubelion, they bring it out in attack mode. I think because they don't care, they know that the match is over. They summon Maxi. And uh, because the normal summon, we're going to go ahead and trigger Eaglin. And I'm going to, I don't know if this is a BM, but I'm going to actually banish the tragedy so that they can get a search uh, for Alibur. Um, But we're going to out the Lubelion anyway. So off Robina, we search DD Crow. Go ahead and only summon two birds. And this is a, another powerful point to make here. You see me only use Robina and Eaglin and then go straight into Ryza. Why? Because I actually want to save the Street and the Lubelion to further lock the opponent down. So what do we spin back to the top of the deck? An edge imp chain, okay? So fine, we go ahead and we activate Dreaming Town. Now we're going to use Street, banish the tragedy. Again, you don't, normally you wouldn't do this because it triggers a tragedy effect. So you'd probably just banish maybe like your own um, advent of adventure so you can bring it back with the token. Um, that's ideally what you should do. But um, yeah, we're gonna let the opponent activate tragedy here. Tukin target the Robina so that the Tukin continues to resolve. And then go ahead and bring out Empin so we get a free search. And this is the sweet thing about Dreaming Town, uh, or sorry, not Dreaming Town, uh, Dimensional Fissure, is that we can now tribute off the Empin. It goes straight to Banish Pal so we can recur it during our turn with the Tukin. And we're once again going to stack their deck with a Fright for a Patchwork that's dead because they've already gone through two polys. They don't really play three polys and three Edge Imp. Um, and then another Maxi that they normal summoned. So we were like severely limiting the opponent. Um, if they didn't end up bringing that Alibur to hand, they literally had like nothing to play off, right? Because they're going to draw a Maxi, dead card. They're going to draw Fright for Patchwork, dead card. They're going to draw Edge Imp Chain, dead, dead card. There's literally nothing they can do. The Alibur at least next turn, if they would have survived, which they wouldn't because we would just go Apex um, and M Pins for 8,100 damage. But yeah, there was nothing that they could do there. So that is, you know, going second. You can see how Floandries is able to break boards. Even without the evenly matched, we would have likely been able to break that opponent's board. 
Um, so GG's to that opponent. And that was our, I think, rank up game into Platinum 4. All right, this was my second match of Season 17, going uh, with Floandries against a mystery deck. The opponent won the coin toss, opted to go first, and either completely bricked or drew nothing but board breakers and hand traps. Looking at their deck, they're playing 49 cards, so kind of interesting. I was thinking maybe it's like Branded Tier Limits or something like that. Definitely was expecting this to get like ashed or just interrupted somehow. Still expecting that the opponent has like Ghost Ogre, Gamma, something like that in hand, evenly matched. Um, definitely, you know, you don't just draw no engine for your deck um, and not have some kind of interruption. So seeing the advent go through was surprising. I'm going to go ahead and search out map by banishing the Empin off advent. Activate map and then uh, go with Tukin. Now I'm going to summon Tukin, target the Empin that we banished with the advent, and then activate Robina effect. This is an important concept to, to learn uh, with this deck actually. If you're in a situation where you're fearing like an imperm or an effect veiler going through, I mean, effect veiler isn't really a real thing in the meta right now because it's a very low impact against tier limit and it's you can't use it if you're like under defigure or shifter, which is pretty common also in the meta right now. But when you summon Tukin, you want to activate Robina as chain link one and Tukin as chain link two. What this allows to happen is the Tukin effect as chain link two will, will resolve first meaning that the Robina will come back to hand, then Robina as chain link one will not activate. It doesn't mean you can activate Robina as effect again because you, you attempted to activate the effect, so you've already used the once per turn effect. But what, what this does is if you do get impermed on your token, because it was chain link two, it won't resolve. And then the chain link one Robina in the banished pile still will actually end up resolving and coming back to your hand. So it protects you from ensuring um, that you, know, you don't get stopped by imperm by making sure that Robina comes back to your hand. Right? If um, the token is again chain link 2 and Robina is chain link 1 and they like gamma your token, you still have your Robina coming back to your hand as chain link 1 even though your token was stopped. And yes, you won't be able to summon off token resolving, but you haven't used your normal summon if you used map to uh, get the extra normal summon in, right? So you can see here we still have our normal summon. So we can't do that in this case to bring back Robina because we're targeting Empin with, with the um, token. But in other scenarios, that's kind of how you want to set that play up to make sure you get Rubina back to hand no matter what. So in this scenario, if the opponent did have an Imperm, I would have been screwed because I targeted Empin. So arguably the safer bet was targeting the Robina to make sure I was getting it back to hand, but this worked out anyways. So we're in a pretty good scenario now. The opponent has yet to reveal any kind of interruption. Their screen I think was lighting up. Um, so I think they had something. I don't know what it was though. Uh, but yeah, Empin Search is going to get another advent because we already have uh, Unexplored Winds and Dreaming Town. So I talked about this in my decklist video, why running two of these can be very nice. And in this scenario, um, actually hard drawing them is, is very good. So I have all three power spells in rotation and I'm able to search for another kind of interruption to a certain degree in advent. So this can't use during my turn because I already used one. But during my opponent's turn, if I get even lead, I can activate this, banish the Empin. Um, save my Empin from getting banished face down, maybe save my map instead now because of that. Um, I do play a second, like I said, Unexplored win, so I could always search out another one if this one gets banished face down. So there's a lot of utility in this hand, but because off of the Eaglin, we searched Apex, what I'm actually going to do here is off of Empin resolving, normal summon the Eaglin, and I can't use the effect because I already used it this turn, so my normal summoning is stopped here, but I still have my normal summon for turn. So with the two small birds on board, I'm also able to bring Apex. What this allows me to do is again if i'm anticipating the opponent has an evenly matched i can stop it with this apex right and keep my m pin and the uh magnificent map on board still so battle phase always attack with apex first because if you do need to negate something um you've already attacked with the apex so you can bring it back to hand and then main phase two nothing gets activated then i go ahead and activate all my spells and uh, set my cards pass turn so my eaglin and robina are still banished but i can recur them again with the toucan so not a big deal the opponent normal summons we got map We've got the Dreaming Town as well for more interruption. So why this is really powerful is because off of, you know, going through any bird rotation, I'm going to be able to get Street, and then all four birds are in rotation. I search Ryza. Ryza bounces back to hand. On normal summon, I Ryza. Off Dreaming Town, I Ryza. I put four cards back to the opponent's deck, outing two cards on field and two cards in graveyard. Very, very, very strong. Plus, I can always tribute off their own cards if I wanted to. So I have a lot of different lines of play. Say I bring Apex back to hand. They put something on board. I use... Um, unexplored wins to tribute off that card, bring Apex back to board, and have another negate ready to go. 
So the opponent reveals that they're on like Subterra Earth deck. So really interesting. Um, and because they bricked turn one, I'm like, let me stop this search. And uh, I do have a DD Crow to interrupt what they try to bring back from the graveyard too. So I actually hard drawing the DD Crow after I talked about it in my deck list not wanting to draw it, but in this case, it, it's no problem. And the reason I was safe with this, because I'm like, even if the opponent has evenly matched, they attempt to go battle phase, I bring back out Apex. Uh, if they have Lightning Storm, I, uh, yeah, let these go, and I still bring like Apex to board. Very unlikely they have Lightning Storm though, because um, that's not really a card that's being played. So again, just knowing the meta helps you play around this stuff. The opponent attempts to go battle phase here, so I activate Dreaming Town, and then they just scoop it up there. So that was the second match of Season 17, and pretty successful going second.